So that's cool, right? We can see that essentially what's happening is that by pointing to one of these bases, we're able to then point to all of the transformation information that we need in order to drive stoner, uh, which is really incredibly handy. So um, that's swell. Okay, what else could I do with that? Well, we could imagine a world where maybe we had something like, maybe all of these particular pieces lived in a base that we call the calibration or some other clever name. I'm going to go ahead and grab all that. I'm going to dump this in here. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this tow file. Uh, so I've got a stoner example here directory. Stoner, uh, let's call this project.tow. And if we go ahead and take a look over here da, 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 at the file size for that, okay, well, you know, that's a healthy, healthy nine megs. That's, you know, all right. What happens if, let's go ahead and do a constant, and I'm gonna change this to say B, 4K instead. Okay, so if we route this 4K image in through here, let's check, right? That's 4K, that's 4K. If we save this project again, now if we go back, go ahead and take a look back here. Oh, look at that. Still only that. Aha! Still so small because we didn't actually make any changes. Let's go ahead and make a few changes so we can confirm that that remap texture is actually changed in its size. So again, right where we want to work on channel one to get started. Great. Love it. I'm going to go ahead and move around this bottom corner here. Great. I can see that updated. Now I want to change channel two. Great, so my UI updated, excellent. And I wanna move those around. I'll grab that little corner, make sure you're getting closer for this. There we go. Great, let's dip in to make sure, all right, so, oh, let's unlock, lock. Our remap texture is still awfully small. What's going on? Well, some of that's generated off of this input. So let's plug this bit in here because this is going to actually start to demonstrate how big these sizes are. Let's go back one more time. Channel one. We're going to make that viewer active. We'll move around a corner. Let's go to channel two. We'll move a corner. OK. We're going to go ahead and double check everything. Looks like this is 4K. Excellent. That's nice and big and juicy. This one's also 4K. All right. Excellent. Let's save our project. We've got a nice, big, long, healthy pause here as we write all that to file. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, now what? Well, now if we take a look back here, we can see that now we're, we're you know, weighing in closer to like 70 megs uh, for our tow file. Yowza, holy cannoli. So what could we do to make this smaller? Well. First of all, I don't want to commit a tow file that big to a repo. Like, I'm going to be over my limits before I know it. I'm going to be pulling my hair out. What I could do is I could take this base calibration and I could save this component just as a tox, right? So here's my calibration tox. I'm going to externalize this. So I'm extracting this from my network proper. It takes a hot minute for that to all happen. Right, and then now I'm gonna make sure that here I point back to that calibration talks. I wanna reload it on start. I do not wanna save a backup of the external. Turning off this parameter makes sure that I no longer save the contents of this particular component in my tow file. So now when I save my tow file, I should be able to go back 
to my directory. And here now I can see that, sure enough, I've got this calibration talks. I have this external file that's 70 megs, 69 megs and change. And then I have my project file that's only 4 kilobytes. So this is a technique that I like using in my own work uh, and my own installations that I work on where I actually uh, externalize all the calibration information so it doesn't actually live inside of my project. And I never commit that to my repo. That's part of my git ignore and make sure that I don't populate any of my um, directories or anything that actually lives in the cloud with that information. That only lives on the machine that it actually needs to be on. Um, which also means that you could do things like say, take this, make another directory, maybe backup calibration. And you could do something like save a copy of a calibration that you really liked without having to go through the, through the rigmarole of trying to reconstruct it. This is handy in a lot of uh, interesting ways, right? Because it means that this uh, whole big goober no longer lives in your network, which is really slick. It means that you can do, you've got a lot more control over how you're managing uh, the file size for your project. And it also gives you a healthy optimization boost because now we're looking at a much, uh, a significantly smaller computation overhead than we had previously when we had a bunch of stoners. They were all running at the same time in here. So that's part of what we're up to. Okay, so that's, that's what we got here. So the question of the day is how can we take better advantage of some of that, right? Because this is really slick. Okay, that's this is great to know, but uh, you know, outside of just like some general concepts, how on earth would I use this? Um, because I'm a pragmatic person.